Alright, hello. So today I'm going to be talking to you um, about my Lana Del Rey remix, Born to Die. So this is just a remix that I've obviously done. Um, obviously, so I'm just going to give you a little play of it and then we'll just talk about obviously what the static mix is, the uh, signal to noise ratio, DBFS, dynamic range, the headroom, the EQ, compression used, um, effects used, Melodyne, didn't, well, I didn't use any Melodyne, so it's alright, um, automation, and then just we'll talk about the end, so what went well, what didn't, and obviously what can be improved. So I'll just give you a little play, yeah? Right, there we go so there's just a little play of it so um reason why i sort of chose uh to do like a lana del rey remix is because i got the acapella but unfortunately it, it was so out of sort of time and out of tempo really from what we've recorded it because and, and it just didn't go so there's some limited sort of samples that are in there but it's the same sort of chord structures just in a sort of different style so we'll talk about the static mixing so the static mix we open the open the mix um the wires are just obviously brought down to 1.6. The kick in, which is not maybe not using those. Um, so the guitar. So this is just the acoustic guitar that's being played. I just literally brought that by 0 0.8, and the electric guitar that comes in because it was quite loud. I just brought it down to 4.2. Brought it down to 4.2 um, with the the drums. So I just recorded three drums. So three microphones for the drums. I recorded a kick, just to, so the kick inside the uh, the actual uh, kick drum, and then just a snare on top, and then just the just an overhead, and that's simply it. That's just ex that's all I've done. Uh, I recorded it in the live room because I like the sound in there. So I wanted it to sort of sound sort of raw and sound a bit sort of sort of a bit sort of rocky. So yeah. And all I've done is just lower down kick by 1.5 and the snare by 0 0.2 and the overhead just by 1.2 and that's about it and then we've got the cajon that comes in obviously into the verses so i double tracked the cajon didn't use the cajon back i literally just used the cajon fronts just literally and then because they're automated they're automated as well so obviously they're, zero, they're plus this is plus eight um by 0 0.8 and the other one's just down just to give it do you know what I mean because I don't want it too loud because I was it, it just delays a bit and it just doesn't sound clear enough so yeah if I do you know what I mean it just sounds a bit sort of delayed which is not what I want I just want it to give it just some background in the background and the shaker well the shaker comes in only in the verses that's just I've dropped that down because it's quite loud when I recorded it so I've literally just dropped that down to zero point, just just to eight, sorry, just by eight decibels, and that's about <laughs> And obviously, I've auxiliary the drums, and then we'll talk about that later. So yeah, so then if uh, so, that's really the static mix. So if I move on to the signal to noise ratio, so haven't really used any noise gates on here. So really, I, I'm not really going to go into like sort of explain that. The DBFS, um, the start of the track, I think is quite quiet. So especially with it playing and then it obviously comes in and builds up and it's quite loud with the guitar so yeah so um that's the really the dbfs the dynamic range i think the track i think it's it's quite it's you I mean it's got like it's quiet from the start and then obviously it goes into loud so it gets louder so it's, it's, it builds up so i think it's got quite a very dynamic range so you know what i mean it, it, gets quieter and then it gets louder with the the headroom so certain tracks do peak especially with this guitar so what i've done is i've just stuck a, a compressor on just to limit it and I'll, i've turned it down by obviously 4.2 um the eq so if we talk about the eq on on the guitar so the acoustic guitar 
All I've done really is obviously just cut some of the dirt from the sides, take away the 500 hertz, drop that down by minus five, and just boost it up some of sort of the mid sort of lows, just to give it that sort of like nice dynamic sound. And then put another EQ on, just boost it up just some of the just some of the mids in a way. So then, and then I've used the uh, the tube tech compressor just to just to give it as my creative EQ because I really like this EQ and it sounds really nice. So what I've done is I've just boosted up just some of the low ends just to, just to the mids, cut down some of the highs really, just up left it at four and that's about it really. So you're going, going to the second guitar. What I've done is just cut some of the dirt from the sides and probably lower that down just to make that sort of horrible noise. So I did boost up the originally, but there was a horrible sound that we can hear, so I've just got rid of that. I think boost-wise, I think it's okay. Um, so yeah, and also, like, a, I've stuck the other EQ on there, so the Tube Tech EQ, so that's probably, I mean, making give it a nicer sort of sound. So yeah, boosted up the lows, really, and just and, uh, boosted up some of the highs as well. Not too much, though. So yeah, that's, that's pretty much what I've done um, EQ-wise. So EQ on the kick... We play the kick. I've literally just boosted up the lows, take away the fire engine notes and just cut cut the, the highs. The snare. Um take away the lows, boost up some of the some of the like sort of the I wouldn't say the pop, but more sort of the you know yeah, you could say yeah, the pop sort of and then boost up some of the highs there in sort of the mid sort of highs, drop down the five hundred hertz and obviously drop down um the highs and then with with the overheads, what I've done Drop down the dirt from the sides, boosted up the pop, obviously where you can hear the snare, 500 hertz down, and just boost it up just the mids again, and that's about it. Um, so if we, if we, the cajon, all I did really was take away some of the dirt, um, take away the 500 hertz, and boost up just, just so you can hear a bit of that pop, especially from the front, and and just boost up some of sort of the some of the mid sort of frequencies again. Same as with this one as well, with the with the low one. So if we just carry on playing it on, boosted boosted up some of the lows here, so from 70 hertz, so you can hear it. So it's a bit more boom. I mean, you can hear a bit more of a kicky bass, only by about sort of 11 dB, and then the rest just cut out the highs, and that's that's pretty much what I've done. Um, the shaker, I've left the shaker exactly how it is because it's just a shaker. So yeah, I just literally wanted it as as um original as possible so yeah now that's the eq so let's talk about compression so the compression that i've used um i've used a bit of compression no, that's the wrong channel i won't talk about that so i've used a compression on the distorted guitar only a bit though just to, just to get just to clean it up really i don't know that's not compression sorry i'm just i'm using that just to limit it out that's that's all i'm doing and then on the kick I've used a compressor on the kick just to soften it out, so I put sort of, a, I'd say, like a medium sort of fast attack, not too fast, and then a sort of the same release on it, really. Gain quite up a bit, and then, because um, it was quite quiet, so, yeah. And then the threshold sort of, not too much threshold, so it's only being compressed really by up to about two, and that's about it, really. <laughs> so I put... Um, so compression on this literally this is just a limiter so just that's that's all it's doing and that's that's really the compression just in the whole that's the, the only compression i use the effects used really um i've used reverb so i've done another reverb channel because i like doing um just an auxiliary reverb channel i've just got space designer on and i've just sent it to um the acoustic guitar and and the shaker as well and that's it
Oh, wrong guitar. Oh, that one there. So yeah, that that's that's about it. That's about it. So um, the Melodyne didn't, didn't use Melodyne. So the automation. So if we just open up the automation, so click A, we've got so the volume is normal on the front corner, and then when obviously the drums come in, I've just lowered them all down, obviously increased them back up again and lowered them down. Um, with the guitar, done the exact same, lowered it down with the acoustic guitar. And um, also, I've, if we go into the pan, no, not not on that. That's that's wrong. Um, we go into the pan on the guitar as well. I've panned it as well, so as you can hear, if you look at the pan, it's on eight at the moment. And if it builds in, it just gets panned slightly to sixteen, and then goes back to eight, and then more to uh, twenty-six, and obviously to twenty up, yeah, up to twenty-seven. So yeah, that's really the automation that I've used. Um, so overall, um, I think what went well on the track is is I think the recording the drums I think were, sounded really good. Like, I mean, I recorded it just only a couple takes in the live room and it worked really well and it's really good. And I think it's, I think it sounds really good as well, especially with the kick as well. Like only using three mics really, really is you know what I mean is it does sound really good and it gives it some sort of backbone to the song. What didn't I mean? It, in a way, it sounds quite rushed and I mean it could be improved. So like I could really record the electric guitars again. So again, what could be approved? Record the electric guitars again, and just make sure they're sort of in time and just everything. You know, what I mean, just just sounds. You know, what I mean, in time. Do you know what I mean? Because I recorded the drums after I recorded the guitar, and that sort of made it go out of time a bit as well. So yeah. So um yeah.